to talk about MACD, moving average convergence and divergence. Now, I'm a technical trader, but I am a price action trader. In other words, I only trade from what I see on price on my charts. I don't use oscillators and indicators. I don't use all of these fancy mumbo jumbo stuff. I look at price. I look for some price trying to tell me something. I look at trends. I look at support and resistance. And that's how I, and I look at chart patterns. That's me. Other people will use a selection of indicators and oscillators. Now, all of this falls in the field called technical analysis. I say also, let's throw that term away, technical analysis. Let's call it chart analysis. Everything we do requires a chart. And anything, no matter how tiny it is, whether you're drawing a line on your chart, whether you're drawing a circle on your chart, whether you're putting an indicator on your chart, it's all chart analysis. Now, lots of people ask me all the time, do I think prices are going to go up today? Do I think they're going to go up tomorrow? What will something be worth next week? What will something be worth today? Do you think gold is going to move today? Do you think Bitcoin is going to go down today? These all seem like seemingly simple questions. I don't have a Ouija board or a crystal ball, and neither do you, and neither do these gurus out there trying to tell you they do. But the fact is, neither, not, not, neither does technical analysis. So if you're attending this webinar with the hopes that technical analysis or chart analysis will improve your investing experience, that it will do. It's not going to give you the answers and tell you what to do. That's up to you and your experience, but nothing can tell you where the price will be tomorrow. Now, MACD was developed by Gerald R. Pell in the late 70s. Now, I don't know how many of you are old enough to be, have been, even been around in the late 70s. But in the 70s, we had the stock exchange. We had the commodities exchange. We didn't have much else. We had no online trading. We had no internet. And predominantly, you either were like me sitting on the Chicago Board of Exchange and I was trading agriculturals, or you were trading the stock market. But you were trading, you were either had a seat, or you, uh, or you worked for a broker, or you used a broker. There was no way you could directly trade, place a trade. So everybody used the famous stock brokers. So MACD was developed in the 70s. So what was it developed for? Developed for the stock market. And it was used to spot changes in the strength, direction, momentum, and duration of a trend of a stock's price. Now, years went on, and we started getting some Forex trading. We started, you know, a couple of things like E-Trade that allowed you to trade stocks online. But it really wasn't online trading. You could place an order online that would go to your broker who would then execute your trade. But time progressed, the world progressed, and MACD progressed with it and became one of the most popular technical indicators in Forex trading, short-term trading, and online trading. And the fabulous thing about MACD is it works for short-term periods, and it works for long-term periods. Now, MACD falls into a group of what we call lagging indicators. Now, that's not a bad thing. We have leading and lagging indicators. Now, it's not like the teacher called you about your son and said he's lagging behind the class. Okay, that means he's falling behind the class, but it's also a bad thing. Lagging indicators, which most indicators are, tell you what's already happened, confirms what's happened, or tells you something has happened. It doesn't predict the future. There are very few indicators that do because all the indicators out there, every one of them, only has five different pieces of data you can use. 
the open, the high, the low, the close, and volume. That's it. Now, they can apply many different statistical and mathematical formulas and move this data around many different ways to help it you interpret it. But the fact is, if you need the close of the previous candle or the previous price to calculate your indicator, it's always going to be lagging. Now, to this effect, moving averages was one of the most popular and most simplest used indicator around the world. The problem with moving averages, they're, they're quite simple, but they were also severely lagging. So some mathematicians came up with what we call EMA, the exponential moving average. It was developed in the hopes of moving an average, reducing the lag time in the moving average and making the price more responsive to the current prices. Now, MACD is based on moving averages, but it extends them even farther. Now, it's a relatively easy tool, and the mathematics going into it, you don't ever have to calculate, but we will go through them. Because you need to understand what each of the lines on your chart from MACD tell you and where they come from so that you can interpret the final result and make sense of it. So MACD starts out using a 26 and a 12 day exponential moving average. Why an EMA? Because an EMA tries to move closer to a leading indicator from a lagging. It's still a lagging indicator, but it reduces that lag time and gives much more weight to the most current time, the most current price. So let me pop up a live chart and let's take a look at this. Okay, let's, so let me shut all this down so you're not looking at it. And here on the top, or here over price, we're looking at a 12 period Moving average, let's make it darker so you can see it better. And a 26 period moving average. Okay, so those are the two light blue and darker blue lines going over top of the price chart. These are the two beginning lines for moving for MACD. But if we were to say this is an indicator, basically this is just a, a moving average crossover strategy using two different moving averages. Very simple, but it's not a great indicator, but this is the skeleton for MACD. Because Gerard Arpel moved this indicator many steps forward to give you a much more accurate indication. Now, in a moving average crossover strategy, we would look at the two different moving averages and every time they crossed each other would either give us buy signals or sell signals. But again, that's really too basic. So MACD goes a bit farther. Let's just shut these down a little bit. So what MACD does, it takes the difference between the 12 period and the 26 period. Symbols takes the 12 period and subtracts from that 26 period. Whatever that difference is, positive or negative, it charts it down below. Now this chart down below starts out with a zero line. And 
there is no borders or no restrictions on what the difference could be. The difference could be very large or it could be very small. But when one line crosses the other like it does on the chart here or here, we have the same exact price crossing the same exact price. So when we take the two exact same prices and subtract them from each other, what do we get? We will always get zero. So whatever we see the MACD line, this light blue line down below, crossing the zero line, we know that the 12 period and the 26 period line just crossed each other here because they are zero. When we see the MACD line move up, we know the 12 period moving average is larger than the 26 period moving average. When we see it fall down below the zero line become negative, we know that the 26 period is larger than the 12 because when you take the 12 and subtract the larger number, you're always going to get a negative. So all of this that we see on these two lines of the EMAs are already contained in this blue line down below. And this blue line, let's make it a little bit thicker so you can see it better, is called the MACD line. So at this point, we no longer need these lines on our chart because we'll never go back to them. Now, again, if we were just to trade this blue line and it crosses a zero, we're just trading a moving average crossover strategy. MACD takes it one step farther. It's going to take it two steps farther, but right now it takes us one step farther. And what it does, it takes this number, whatever it might be, and takes a nine period moving average of that number and charts it on your chart. And that is called the trigger line or the signal line. So this orange line that's on the chart now below is a nine period EMA of exponential moving average of the blue line right above it. So when this line crosses this line, it's giving us transaction alerts. Because I'm not going to say buy and sell signals. It's telling you that there's a transaction alert for you to go look farther. There is a buy opportunity or a sell opportunity appearing. But MACD again takes us a little bit farther than that. It creates a graphic representation of what the moving averages and price is trying to tell you. And it uses what's called a histogram. So this histogram is a full visual representation of price movement, the MACD, which is the two EMAs, as well as the nine period EMA. So really we could at this point get rid of the nine period and the moving the MACD line and the signal line. Not everybody does. You can leave it on. In fact, most people leave it on the chart. I get rid of it entirely because everything is contained within this histogram. Firstly, every time this histogram turns from red to green, what's happened? The MACD line, because remember, it's all set on the zero line over here. None of that changed. So if you think back, that zero line and the cross of that zero line above or below 
tells you that that nine period moving average and that 26 period moving average just crossed over each other. The depth of these movements can be seen in the depth of the the pie chart or the line chart on the on the histogram. Now this is not based on price. This is based on the difference in the values of the MACD line and the MACD signal line. But you notice they kind of correspond with price movement, but they're actually a little bit ahead of price movement. Here, when we've broken across the zero, we would have gotten a possible transaction alert for a buy and price would, is going up at the same time. Now it's hard to see on this demonstration chart only because there's not, this is a live chart and there's not much price movement. So let's go over to another chart now that you've seen it all put on there. So each time here that the MACD line and the MACD signal line have crossed or the histograms gone over, you can see that I've drawn the lines on here and they're all predicting a transaction move. You can also see overbought and oversold areas because when the peaks and valleys in the histogram get too big, we would know that they're getting, you know, that there's been a lot of movement in that direction. So therefore they're getting the point when they've moved all the way up and start curving down, means the momentum is waning. So we've probably hit an overbought zone. When it's the opposite way, we probably hit an oversold zone. We can also see divergence when the histogram is moving one direction and price is moving in the other. So we have lots of things to reference, but keep in mind that MACD does not, and the reason I say their transaction signals or alerts is number one, MACD isn't telling you to buy or sell anything because MACD is not telling you how far that move might go. There might be a MACD transaction alert that, yes, if you got into it instantaneously and there was no spread and you got out right point, you would have made money. But MACD doesn't tell you it's only going to go up 10 pips or it's going to go down 22 pips. MACD is only telling you that there's an opportunity unfolding. And because MACD isn't telling you how far it's going to go, or telling you what the momentum is of that trade, or telling you where a stop loss would be, or what an entry price should be. If you're using these as buy and sell signals, as opposed to just transaction alerts, you can get whipsawed in and out of a lot of trades. They, it moved in the direction MACD said, but it didn't even, by the time you got in it, it didn't even cover the spread and you ended up with a losing trade. So you need to use MACD with other things. Here you can see I've combined MACD with my Fibonacci levels, and I can use my Fib tables to get entry point stop loss points and see where I could predict the asset might move. And if you combine that with support and resistance, you would have a good opportunity to make a good decision. So let's go back to my PowerPoint right now. And let's catch up to where we are. So remember, MACD gives us three stories. It shows us converge, it shows us crossovers, it shows overbought and oversold conditions, and it shows us divergence. So the basic MACD trading rules to sell and that's a very bad way to say it, is to be aware that there's a, a transaction alert for a possible sale when MACD falls below its signal line or goes below the zero line. Similarly, a buy signal occurs when the moving average rises above its signal line. So when it goes above zero, it's giving you a transaction alert for a long position. When it goes below, it's giving you a transaction alert for a sell. 
Now, overbought and oversold conditions. The MACD is also a useful, useful as an overbought, oversold indicator. When the shorter moving average pulls away dramatically from the longer moving average, it is likely that the symbol is overextending and will soon return to more realistic levels. So you can see it in the two lines, the MACD and the signal line, or you can see it in the histogram. And lastly is divergence, an indicator that an end to the current trend may occur, occurs when the MACD diverges from a symbol. So in other words, the MACD is moving in one direction and the symbol, the asset, is moving in a different direction. So keep in mind, a, a, the histogram is a fourth derivative of price. So a MACD histogram is an indicator of an indicator. In fact, MACD is also an indicator of an indicator. This means that the MACD histogram is four step removed from price of the underlying security. In other words, it's the fourth derivative. And since it's using its basis for EMAs, it's moved you as close as possible from a leading to a lagging. And it's not forecasting, but it's pretty close to when the move has actually occurred. So the first derivative is the 12 day moving average and the 26 day moving average. Those are the two moving averages we put on the price chart. The second derivative is the MACD line. That's the 12 day EMA or the 12 period EMA less the 26 period EMA, which was the MACD line. Remember the, light, the blue line we put down below. The third derivative is the MACD signal line, which is the nine day EMA of the MACD line. Remember the orange line we put below. And then the fourth derivative is the MACD histogram. And that is the MACD less the signal line. So the base of the indicator is the securities price but it takes four steps to get the actual price to the MACD histogram. And remember I said to you in the beginning of the class, everything uses open, high, low, and close. It's all how the data is being massaged with mathematical calculations, statistical calculations. But ultimately what we're trying to do is get some sense out of it, as well as moving it from a lagging to a leading indicator. So therefore it is designed to anticipate signals in MACD, which in turn is designed to identify changes in the price momentum of the underlying security. Now keep in line that zero line or the center line is also a telling sign. There's no fine rules about it. But as price is moving up to the zero line, breaking the moving line, the zero line and moving below that zero line, it's telling you something about that asset. So keeping your eye on that center line can be very important. Now the biggest disadvantage of using the indicator to generate transaction signals is that a trader can get whipsawed in and out of position several times before they're able to capture a strong move in the change of momentum. As you can see in this little chart, the lagging aspect of the indicator can generate several transaction signals during a prolonged move. And this causes the trader to realize small unimpressive gains or even small losses during a rally. And keep in mind that MACD is much more accurate during a uptrend or a downtrend. Now traders should be aware of the whipsaw effect because it can be in severe in both trade and trending and range bound markets. Now, as I mentioned earlier to you, another drawback is its inability to make comparisons between different securities. It's also its inability to give you stop loss points, buy points, market entry points. So the MACD indicator is one of the most popular tools in technical analysis because it gives traders the ability to quickly and easily identify short-term trend direction. The clear transaction signals help minimize the subjectivity involved in trading and the crosses over the signal line make it easy for traders to ensure they're trading in the direction of momentum. Now that's one of the most important things. You always want to trade in the direction of the momentum because it takes a lot of work to get an asset either moving up or down. 
and it doesn't stop on a dime. So you should always be trading, not trying to predict where the asset's going to move up or down. Once it's moving in a direction that you can confirm momentum, you know, in other words, the firework has been shot off from the ground. Okay. You don't know whether it's a dud yet, but as soon as it goes up a little bit and it's developed that momentum, you know it's going to carry farther up, just like the space shot in the U.S. We never know until it breaks up there and the, the two support boosters fall off if it's actually a successful launch. But once we see those two support boosters break up, we know we are in a definitive move. And that's when we as traders should be ready to enter into a marketplace. We don't want to be there at the, the blast off. We don't want to be there when the booster rockets are getting ready to fire. We want to be ready to get in when those booster rockets have fallen off and that spacecraft has the momentum. So momentum in charting is like momentum in physics. If you throw a ball in the air, it will ascend at a lower and slower pace the higher it projects. After monitoring the change of momentum, a person can determine when the ball will stop climbing and change direction and descend. So just like in physics, momentum changes occur before the price of an asset changes. So remember, if you have any questions, please feel free to send them in to Alvexo or use the live chat button. I promise you, somebody will answer them for you. So I hope you learned a little bit about tonight. Okay. And the best thing with MACD is all you have to do is click it on your charts. It's going to drop it on automatically with a 12 and 26 and a 90. Do everything for you. It's going to put the histogram all automatically on your charts. Now that you have it on your charts, start developing your own use for it. Start looking at it, seeing what it's doing, reading what it's telling you, see if you can see these things, and then build it into your own trading strategy and your own decisions to trade. So once again, thank you very much for joining us tonight. I hope you learned a little bit, and thank you for being part of Alvexo.